Hi, and welcome back to the e-learning series on BSF BioWaste Processing. This module on BSF product marketing will focus especially on how to perform a market assessment. After watching this module, you will be able to list potential revenue streams from BSF conversion. Then you will be able to describe the BSF larvae derived products and understand how to compare them in terms of quality and application. You will be able to use the market assessment we demonstrate here to perform your own market study. You will also be able to identify substitute products for BSF larvae products. And finally, you will understand the relationship between different market stakeholders in the pet food market of East Java. So by using the BSF conversion technology, bio waste is converted into larval biomass and residue. These are both potential revenue streams for a BSF bio waste processing site. After composting the residue, it can be sold as compost. The larvae can be sold directly fresh, or they can be further processed into different types of products, like dried larvae products, meal, oil, or pellets. You will usually get a yield of around 30 to 40% of BSF frost from your input waste. Studies show that BSF frost can be used as a soil conditioner or as a substitute for synthetic fertilizer. Selling your BSF RAS is definitely recommended. However, usually you can only expect low selling prices. Up to 20% of your input bio waste will be converted into larval biomass. BSF larvae are high in protein and fat and are therefore an ideal ingredient for animal feed products. Moreover, insects are part of the natural diet of many animals, such as chickens and birds. There is also another option, how you can create revenue with your BSF site. If your rearing unit is overproducing, which means you run the rearing unit at a larger capacity than you actually need for your waste treatment, you can sell BSF rearing products. These are BSF eggs, five-day-old larvae, pre-pupae or pupae. These products are interesting for other BSF sites or BSF newcomers. The sales volume are low, but usually the market value of these products is quite high. However, usually the main revenue will come from selling the live larvae. Several BSFL products may have the potential to create revenue. The quality and the use of BSFL products depends on the extent of further processing. Whereas fresh larvae are not further processed, dried larvae require a drying step and BSF meal and oil require a fat extraction and a refining step additional to the drying. BSFL mainly consists of proteins and fats. That's why we give in this table only these nutritional parameters. For both protein and fat content, we give a range as these parameters depend on the waste source used to feed the larvae. Drying removes water from the larvae and the remaining nutrients in the product become more concentrated which means dried larvae have a higher protein and fat content per sellable weight compared to the fresh larvae. The fat in the dried larvae can be mechanically extracted, which then results in a high protein meal and BSF fat or BSF oil. The product choice has also an effect on storage and transport. So selling the larvae directly live has the advantage that no further investment or operational costs are needed. However, fresh larvae cannot be stored and transporting is more difficult. Easiest is when end users, like farmers, directly pick up the fresh larvae at the BSF site. Dried larvae, BSF meal and BSF oil have a longer shelf life and therefore they're also easier to store and pack and transport. This facilitates marketing activities but increases investment and operational costs. Finally, the products are also used in different ways. Whereas fresh larvae and dried larvae can be used as a direct feed product, the BSF meal and oil are raw materials and they are usually mixed in feed products, like for example pellets. Now, the question is, which of these BSFL products is the best one to produce and market? To answer this question, we recommend performing a market assessment. We will show you here how we did that for the case of East Java. Usually there are two main market segments to go for, 
the farmed animal feed and the pet food sector. To find out which has more potential for your business case, it's essential to perform this market assessment. And we did that in five steps. First, we identified for each market substitute products. Substitute products are already existing products in the respective markets that have a similar application and quality compared to potential PSFL products. In a second step, we quantified the market size for those products. This means we looked at how much of those products are sold each month. This comes to a value of X tons per month. In a third step, we quantified the market value for those products. So depending on how much was sold at a certain price, you get to X USD per month. Then in a fourth step, we checked the market price range. So what is the cheapest product? What is the most expensive product? And what is the range there? And then in the last step, we check the regulations and standards which are in place and which um, are needed to sell the product. For the case of East Java and for a small scale BSF production site, we concluded that the pet food market is the most potential market to enter. This is based on that there are many different substitute products. The market demands are lower, but this is positive in this case, as it's easier to enter also with a smaller scale. Then the product price range seems to be more flexible um, and are in general higher than for the farmed animal feed market. And lastly, there are less regulations in place, which also facilitates entering with a new product. For East Java, the most common pets are ornamental birds and ornamental fish. So to give you an example, um, now specifically for the pet food market in Surabaya, we looked at the substitute products already available there. You can see that there are already many insect based products available and also processed pet food, which could be replaced by pellets containing BSF meal instead of fish meal, for example. So we matched potential BSFL products with potential substitute products. And then we looked at the current sales prices of the already existing products and their sales volume and summed that up and came to a total market volume of around 1 million USD per month for the city of Surabaya. The largest contribution is from dried insects and processed pet food. So we concluded that going for a post-processed BSFL product has the highest potential to enter the pet food market in Surabaya. For this case study in East Java, Surabaya, we asked the last question. We looked at where is it easiest to enter the BSF market, which channel works best. For that, we looked at the different market stakeholders. Here in this chart, you see the different stakeholders involved in the pet food market. And the BSF side could collaborate directly with the pet food producers by supplying products, raw materials as BSF meal or, or oil, and they use it to create their own product. Or an already finalized product could be sold to distributors, retailers, or end users. So as you can see, there are many different options how to enter the market. It makes sense to connect with these different stakeholders and find out which is the easiest channel for your business to enter. For the case of East Java, we found that the pet food producers usually require large quantities and they work with agreements or contracts. Like regular quality inspections will be part of the agreement. Distributors usually also work with agreements as they work normally in the background. It can be difficult to get in contact with them. Retailers, on the other hand, are very visible and easy to find. The collaboration is more informal, but one retailer usually only buys limited amounts of products. Similarly, end user buys small quantities and the selling is informal. We're almost at the end of this module 
and we would like to refresh your mind with two short questions. First question, what is a substitute product? A substitute product is an already existing product in the market which has a similar quality and application compared to a BSFL product. So this means the idea is that BSFL product could be sold instead of this already existing product. Question two, you are thinking of selling your BSF larvae fresh and alive. What should you consider? First, the transport is difficult. It is best to organize that customers, for example, farmers pick up the larvae directly at your site. Second, storage is not possible. Make sure to sell the larvae on a daily basis. Now we're already at the end of this module. We saw that BSF larvae have a high potential to create revenue for a BSF site and can be marketed in different product forms. To find out which product is best to sell, it helps to perform a market assessment. And to find out which market channel is easiest to enter, it helps to connect with different market stakeholders. Thank you for watching this module, part of the e-learning video series on BSF BioWaste Processing. More information can be found in the BSF step-by-step -step guide, which you can download through the QR code here. Both of these materials were part of the FORWARD project by EWAC, in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works in Indonesia and funded by SECO, the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs.